Welcome back. And to the second issue of the day. It is alleged that a field seems to be rocking the southwest, the southwest state of Oshu, and this time is between the current governor of the state, Adegbo Egawayitola, and his predecessor, Raouf Aregbeshola. A while back, Olagunso Yoyinlola, also a former governor of the state, asked Aregbeshola to disease from disturbing the incumbent governor, Uyitola, as the current governor. I mean, this is an advice coming from the former governor. This was said in reaction to reports that Arekbe Shola had scheduled a political program on the same day the incumbent governor planned to hold a second year in office. And joining us to get the real gist, because sometimes they might say this is not the true account, we have the chief press secretary to the governor of Oshun State, uh, Ismail uh, Omikwidon. Good evening, sir. Good evening, the pleasure is mine. And we also have joining us uh, Mr. Jam Jamil Olaumi, who is the special advisor to the governor too on education. Good evening, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. And to also put it on record, we've made several attempts to speak to uh, Governor Regbe Shola's camp. We understand that they are holding a meeting and then they may not be part of this discussion. But if time permits, we will bring them on the show tomorrow to hear their own side of the story. Let me start with uh, Mr. Mikwidon. To start with, we understand that uh, this issue is being blown out of proportion. That's just last year that um, we still had this event being organized by the House of Representative Caucus in Oshun State. And it's not the former governor that actually called for this political program. How true is that position? Well, uh, if we will stand by what is in the public domain, uh, then I want to say without fear of contradiction that uh, whoever is uh, pushing that line of argument is being economical with the truth. How do I mean? Uh, by last year, when we were celebrating our first year anniversary, just like we had this year, we have this year, there was a committee that was set up where we look at various lineup of uh, programs. And so where there are uh, idea of addition, we incorporated them in. That was what happened last year. This year too, a committee was set up. Uh, I'm a member of the committee. The party uh, has representatives on that committee. And in all our meetings, there was no time we ever discussed about uh, our 10 year anniversary. Uh, but if you read uh, the Daily Independent of um, Monday, uh, you will see it clearly where the uh, media aid to uh, the former governor in person of Shola Fashuri stated it clearly in that uh, publication that uh, they were indeed planning. Uh, a 10 year anniversary and that uh, my principal was aware and I had to quickly uh, respond almost immediately uh, that to the best of our knowledge uh, my principal is not aware is not in the know of any 10 year anniversary okay. celebration and by the next day what we read from uh, the media aid to the former governor was the uh, uh, the governor was uh, planning a visit uh, in compliance with the directive of uh, the president on the aftermath of answers. Uh, so for, for me, if you put these two statements side by side, you will agree with me that uh, there are some contradictions there. So that is why I say clearly that whoever is pushing the narrative uh, of what you said, it's been economical. Okay. Let, let's find However, out how we're economic. let me... Okay. I'm trying to make sure that we maximize time, but I'll come back to the however, I promise go, you. Go, go ahead. Okay. L let me speak to your colleague um, or the essay now. Uh, Mr. Jamu, my worry is from what I heard from their camp, because I had a conversation with a couple of them before this meeting, they did say that the piece of advice from Uyinlola was uncalled for, that as far as the, 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 the minister is concerned, 
He was being invited. He did not stage any political program. So why this hula baloo, pardon my English, that uh, is coming to disrupt the celebration, the second year in office of Governor Yitola? Thank you very much. Um, there is uh, what I would describe as uh, uh, the body language and the actual steps that would not put anybody in doubt about the ill intention, uh, ill intentions of uh, this other belligerent few uh, who think uh, they could take the, gov the government by the jugular. Uh, if you say you are, I think in every climb, uh, re 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 regimes or administrations are captured by the leadership of the political party, not an individual who has left government. If Osho State chapter of the APC would like to celebrate 10 years of unbroken democracy, it couldn't have been a former governor because the consumer has not been so gracious and so careless to give thought time to any, any, any former governor, whether through the window or through the door. That's one. Number two is, uh, if you look at um, uh, the, 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 the attitude before now, last year it was a case, last year it was a case of uh, somebody uh, wanting to celebrate one year out of office. Simultaneously, when the governor, the constituting governor is marking one year in office. Mm -hmm. I've never had it in any, I, I, in any state of the federation that a former governor whose party is still in power will celebrate first year out of government, <laughs> not even carrying, carrying along the, the incumbent governor. <laughs> I don't know whether you have had it in Lagos or elsewhere. <laughs> Coming to uh, Prince Olola's issue, this was a former governor who joined us in 2014 to defeat PDP. By conduct, by that attitude and conduct, his tenure has been legitimized as progressive because he has come to join us to win election. So if you are looking at progressive uh, in power on, uh, uninterrupted, it is from 1999 when Governor Bisi Akande, the national leader of our party, former national chairman of the party, at, at, assumed office as governor. So in Osho to Ross, there is no... Okay, uh, we understand there's a bit of network issue. So uh, uh, CPS, can you just continue from where you stopped the other time? You were going to give us uh, the other perspective. I'll come back to you, Jamil. Let's listen to Mr. Mikpidon. I think it's a network issue. So, yes, I'm with you. It, okay. It's network. Okay. Mr. Ismail, can you tell us... Um, yeah. I know, I know it's been like... Uh, uh, it's, been, it's been like a trade in governance where we have series of denial. There is no acrimony. There is no animosity. It appears that it's time to speak. So can you tell us more? What is going on? Well, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, I think um, it's just uh, some, uh, I don't want to call them busybodies, <laughs> but uh, for lack of a uh, uh, better adjective to qualify them. Uh, because um, if you look at um, our stage, uh, we came on the mantra of continuity and to show clearly that uh, indeed we meant every sense of the word, we have carried on religiously uh, with all the projects inherited from the previous administration, uh, especially the uh, three major uh, road infrastructure. Uh, we have not abandoned any of the projects that we inherited. And so if we are carrying on with the continuity, uh, I don't think it would be proper 
for any party member to now want to see himself uh, as an outsider. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think um, it is those uh, busybodies who are just trying to create a uh, crisis where none uh, okay. existed. And uh, I think uh, our revered uh, traditional ruler, a landlord in the state capital, Taoja mm -hmm. uh, stated it clearly today uh, when uh, Mr. Governor was inaugurating uh, five uh, network of roads uh, mm -hmm. within the state capital. Is that uh, uh, the distractors should stay clear of uh, the governor and okay. allow the governor to concentrate on the delivery of uh, dividends of okay. democracy. We will wait to confirm that from time to time. Thank you for your time. But let me quickly mm -hmm. get the last comment from Jamil. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether I can push you to spill the beans. Are, are we expecting that uh, there is nothing wrong? This we are, we are not oblivious of the closeness between the former governor and this current governor. Are you saying in clear terms, your national, in fact, international station, to say that we shouldn't expect any form of animosity or any form of acrimony between the two? Yes, uh, as long as um, mm -hmm. the sitting governor, Governor Boege Chola, uh, puts his eyes on the ball and uh, continues to deliver on the mandates uh, he was given, uh, what we have seen here uh, is that the governor is courageous enough to manage this crisis. Uh, whether we're talking about it not talking about this in the public domain. Take, for instance, when there was uh, COVID-19 and there were two, we, we expected support, and the governor put the former governor on the 21-man committee to provide priority for the people. So these are the attitude of the governor to his predecessor. He, we have never forgotten that he was in okay. office. We, are never, we will never forget that the current governor was his chief of staff. We will never forget that uh, he also campaigned with us. We, know, we will never forget that uh, this governor uh, is, brother, is brotherly to all concerned. But okay. something that must be taken uh, away from this is that this governor we also not encourage perpetuity. Okay, thank in you so power much. By some people who would think I, I, I get the message loud and clear. Is... Thank you so much. I get the message loud and clear. That is Jamu Olaumi, SA to Governor Oyutola on education. Thank you for your time. Spe SA for the purpose of uh, emphasis. That's a special advisor to Governor Oyutola. And uh, Mr. Ismail Omigbidon, mm -hmm. who is the Chief Press Secretary to mm -hmm. the Governor. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. The pleasure is mine. God bless you. God bless mm -hmm. us, too. Yeah, God bless you, too. And uh, just to also put it on record, we will be expecting uh, Arek Beshola's come to tell us their own. So we extend this invitation to them again. And hopefully tomorrow, we might be able to get your own take on this matter. Let's quickly take a short breather, and when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take, especially on the issue of the education, less ad education disadvantaged states. Once again, the topic of quota system and federal character are on the front burner. Yes. Governor Al Rufai seems to be a lone voice from the North. Whatever is the history behind this gesture is no longer of great concern. What is of concern is the need to enthrone meritocracy over sense of inclusiveness, which only promotes mediocrity. And the big message here is that let us embrace excellence and we will be better for it as a nation. And that's my take on tonight's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeide, saying bye for now. <laughs>